warm welcome to Education Talk. Now, this is one of your best programs on education on television. Now, from teachers to students and how to help even those in the academies and government officials who are discussing the challenges and bringing solutions to these various categories of people involved in education. My name is Wilma and you're very welcome. Today with me, I have two guests in our studios and we're going to be talking a lot about academies. First, I have Peter Dunn. Peter Dunn is actually the Managing Director of Partnership Education. Peter, you're very welcome to our studio. Thank you very much indeed. And I have Dr. Chris Imapidon. Dr. Chris Imapidon is an education consultant. Dr. Chris, you're very welcome to our studio. Thank you. Wonderful to have you both. Thank you. Now, let's start with Peter. You. You've done so much. Looking at your profile, Peter has 20 years teaching experience encompassing all phases, departmental and leadership roles, followed by 19 years advisory and senior management positions in both local authority and private sector support services. He has served as head of education services within a local authority. And Peter Dunn is also helping setting up schools of excellence in the Middle East, Far East and other countries. Quite a profile there. Yeah, <laughs> now, let's look at you. You have quite a lot of experience when it comes to setting up academies. Now, how can a charity set up a free school? Right. Okay, there's a number of issues here. The, the first thing is that the... Um, government and we have to acknowledge that it was a previous Labour government and it's been um, supported through this administration and we understand irrespective of the elections will continue to be supported um, in future years. The Academies Act that was established is an act under which all schools which you've heard about perhaps free schools, university technical colleges, special schools, alternative provision. The Academies Act is established by Parliament to enable a group of people, an existing charity or a new group of people, to open a school which is deemed an independent state-funded school. And in order to become an independent state-funded school, you have to establish a charity. You may not have done so in the first instance. You might be parents, you might be a church group, um, or any other interested group, perhaps even employers, who would like to establish a school. And the first thing you need to do is to set up a trust. Once you have a charitable trust, you are then able to you know, submit um, an application to open a school. It will be an academy, but we have to say, and I know you're going to ask me the difference shortly, <laughs> there is a difference now between the use of the word an academy school and a free school. Most people are actually not very well aware of that. They actually think it means the same thing. Now, what's the difference? Okay, well, I've, I've just mentioned that in there. The Academy Act is the parliamentary rule of law by which you can establish an independent school, independent state school. We use the term now, Academy, to mean an existing school which may have failed and has been taken over, offered support to become um, an Academy supported perhaps by a successful school. Equally, there might be a successful school that wants to convert to become an academy. Why would it want to be an academy? Because it will receive additional funding. It will receive probably about 5% more money that was previously held by the local authority. And there are certain freedoms that come with being an academy. The main one is you don't have to follow the national curriculum. You do have to follow and pr provide uh, pupils with maths and English and with science and with RE in a mainstream, but there are other freedoms. Now, the term free school has come to be more recently, and the freedom, free, relates to the freedoms. There are extra freedoms to be in a free school. For example, you do not have to employ qualified teachers. The only person that needs to be a qualified teacher in a free school is what's called a SEMCO, someone who deals with someone with special education needs. A free school is, um, has the freedom to alter the days um, of the week that it's open. You might choose to open on a Saturday and close on a Wednesday. You can have a longer school year, 40 weeks instead of 36 to 38. Um, and indeed, you can teach a totally different curriculum. Uh, some of the most exciting free schools at the moment are 16 to 19 where employers uh, are working, like JCB, for example, and the construction industry, are working with local uh, authorities, teachers, and other groups to establish completely
completely new schools because they want to see young people getting work-based skills so that when they leave school they don't just have an A-level and a B-tech, they do have uh, work readiness, they understand what it is to go to, to school. And to help them with that, they've altered the school day to be from half eight in the morning to half five in the evening, which is a very long oh, school day. It is. <laughs> yeah. So a free school then, as distinct from an academy, has all these extra freedoms. But free schools, are they 